You want to practice bushcraft? Well, I got just the tool for you. Check this out. This is a real old and rare bag. I believe it's from probably the 50s, early 50s. It's by a company out of Seattle, Washington called Stusko. And I know that they made gear for World War II. I've looked it up and it's coming back. Some people are saying it's early 1900s, but just from the gear and the way it's built, which is bulletproof, I'm thinking it's later. I'm thinking 50s. But people have them online, they're saying they're from the 1920s. But I'm going to give you a close-up view of it. Bulletproof, beautiful, bushcraft, heaven. So right away, just by looking at it, you can see how beautiful it is. It's construction. And if you get into the hardware, I mean, this zipper is absolutely just beautiful. Super tough. I mean, it's, you know, just bulletproof stuff. The straps leather vintage these will come right back to life what i do is i soak them in just vegetable oil maybe some vaseline but those will rejuvenate you can see this buckle's a little um trashed obviously but if you're thinking this is you know 80 years old well it's held up pretty damn good for 80 years old but the feeling of the canvas or the cotton is just exquisite Beautiful bag. I'm going to zoom in and give you some close-ups. You can see just the construction. I mean, look at these. Original poles. And the straps. Beautiful condition. Again, you're looking at a thing that's close to 100 years old. Look at that. And you can tell this is definitely military stuff. I'm, I'm thinking this came after World War II. There's no date on it, so it's very difficult to tell, but it's extremely similar to the things that I collect that are World War II, almost identical. So it's either before World War II or after, but it's the same stuff, just gorgeous. Here's the company, Stusko, builders of outdoor equipment since 1894. And I know they're out of Seattle, Washington, which could make sense, I'm in Portland, Oregon, and that's where I found this bag. But look at these nails. Can you see that? Now, was that repaired by someone or is that original? We'll never know. And the wood. These end caps. Those are old nails. So these nails here are the same kind of nails that are being used here. So I'm thinking that that is um, vintage and not a repair. Possibly a repair, but you never know. Look at that wood. This is interesting. Look how they've done the straps. So it's just taped off here. Again, I don't know if this has been a repair, but it's tapered over. And then the two pieces split. They come through this hole. And then they proceed. Look at that. Look at the stitching. Beautiful. Let me get down here and what I'm talking about, you know, 100% World War II. Extremely the same. There's a little black electrical tape on here. You know, what comes into question is when I see this kind of screw. You know, to me that looks a lot later. And I can see that there's a mark where a washer went. So I'm thinking this is later, in my opinion. Just a feeling. I may be wrong. Look at that hardware. Gorgeous. Looking at the front side of the bag, it's the ultimate bucket. So it's just a simple flop up. Again, here, World War II military. This is extremely, you know, it's identical. So this would have, you know, created a little top. And just look at that material. I wish you could see the color. Beautiful. And it's got these long metal spines for stability that run all the way down to here. That's what's attaching it to the wooden frame. Then inside the pack, it's just a simple bucket. And it's deep. I mean, this is definitely, I'd say it's a 65 liter compared to, you know, what we have now. 
Again, you see the slight damage. Well, quite a bit of damage here. So this leather mount is completely destroyed. Not horrible. It can be fixed. Should look like this. Look at that leather work on that rivet. And here we're coming down to the zipper. It's got a front little pouch. It's just beautiful. And look at that zipper. Still zips, no issues, not a single hole on it. Here's the bottom where you'd expect to see a lot of wear and tear. Nothing. Completely solid. Just gorgeous. Then on top here, this flap would have come over, well it does come over, and then it would buckle through here. So looking at these ropes, small strings that are attached here, you can see here obviously that's stitched in. Look at that stitching. You see that? Look at that craftsmanship. Now, in my experience, these usually go through some sort of a eye hole. And I'm looking for what is on the bag. Where could this go? And the only eyes I see, I see these. So that would make sense. That this could come around and go through there. Then come up and go through here. So I bet that's what it does. And there's that red stitch there. Well, I bet that this travels down, goes through here, loops back up, and attaches here. I'll try that. Now, the weird thing is, this one is mounted here. And on the back of the bag, this one's been tied on, so... Did it rip off? Right? If you look at the other side, is there another... red stitch? Oh, here it is. Okay. So this one's on the front. That would make sense. That one on the back, this, must just be extra. Let's see if it's the same size. So it's a different thickness and it's a different braid. So I believe this was something that was just added on that was thrown it off. Look at the wood. Look at the quality of that. What is it? It feels like it's... It's very soft. So you can see there, I just imprinted on it. So what is it? Is it pine? Could it have been pine for light weight? There's no smell on it, so I can't tell. It's been painted also. But it's just so soft that I'm thinking maybe pine for the weight. Maybe they used pine. Is it? This whole thing weighs 4.4 pounds complete. I weighed it. Here we can see how it's put together. So you basically got this entire sheet around the back. And then inside, it's tied off. Look at that tie. This is a metal rod here. If I can get in there, you can see it. And then it's just crisscross tied all the way down. It'd be fun to take it apart, but I don't want to. <laughs> Because it's all original. And then this is wood. Look at this bend, bent wood here. So this has been shaped. So that's been heated. Soaked. To get that bend. It's got a real subtle bend that would contour to your body. You can see the webbing all the way up. Again, 100% World War II gear. So just a gorgeous example of a vintage bag. Imagine what you have right now. It's 2024. You think your stuff will be around in a hundred years? I pretty much guarantee you not. So this is, let's say this was made in the 20s before World War II. You know, it's a hundred years old. Even if it was made in the 50s, it's, you know, 80 years old. I mean, what lasts that long? Think of the stories that this has. These were traditionally used, from what I know, by hunters. You know, they were pack frames, people that were out trapping and such. You know, they were called trapper bags. Just bulletproof it. Imagine the history and the stories this has. Where has this been? Just amazing. The energy is epic. So I would love to take this up and do a multi-nighter. It's my style. If you know me, you know I love buckets. I hate pockets. Bucket style, this is what I love. 
and the canvas, the cotton, this could be waxed beautifully with an auto wax on the top, just bulletproof. I really wish that you could feel it and touch it because it's absolutely beautiful. It takes you right back to, for me, it takes me back to my grandpa, right? He had stuff like this. The smell, it's very oil skin. You know, it might've had some sort of a treatment on it in the past, I don't know, but just beautiful. Love it. Hang tough.